There's a secret hiding in plain sight, hidden in the beams of barns, the posts of old bridges, and the forgotten storage chests that survived centuries of rain, frost, and neglect. Wood that should have rotted decades ago is still standing tall, still unyielding. What's the trick? Medieval craftsmen were playing a game most modern builders forgot. A method so clever it seems almost like cheating nature itself. And the truth is, it wasn't magic, it was method. Long before chemical treatments and pressure-treated lumber, there were men with axes, fires, and a deep understanding of how wood lives and dies. The way they worked with timber was simple, brutal, and effective. This wasn't superstition. It was engineering, honed through centuries, and when you see it in action, you'll realize how far ahead of the curve they were. Harvest wood when nature protects it. The first secret is timing. Medieval carpenters knew that sap was the enemy. Sap fed insects, fungi, and bacteria. It was like leaving candy out for pests. To beat rot before it even started, they cut their timber in the coldest months of winter, usually after the first hard freeze. Here's the genius. When a tree freezes, its sap circulation slows, leaving the wood denser, drier, and much harder to decay. Once felled, the bark was stripped while the fibers were still flexible. This was not just about aesthetics. It was about cutting moisture retention to the bone. Even today, if you harvest a log in winter, store it upright under a simple shelter for a week or two, and then strip the bark, you'll see a tighter, cleaner grain that's already firmer than a summer-cut log. That one step alone can extend the life of a post or beam by 50%. Next, they didn't leave the timber round. They squared it, hewed it, and carefully removed the sap-rich outer layers to expose heartwood, the strong core full of natural rot-resistant compounds. But, you know, the real magic was in the angles. Broad, flat faces and angled edges weren't just for looks. Rainwater shed off cleanly. Seepage was minimized. No pooling, no trapped moisture. Every cut had a purpose. Every plane of wood was a miniature defensive fortress against decay. This isn't theoretical. Even a basic understanding of these shapes today lets you build posts, tool handles, and outdoor structures that outlast pressure-treated lumber. All it takes is effort, planning, and the knowledge of how water interacts with grain. Now, this is where historians pause. The medieval craftsmen took a risk that, well, modern safety officers would probably flinch at. They burned the surface of the wood. Not to destruction, not to weaken it, but just enough to carbonize the outer fibers. The result? A thin, fire-sealed skin that repelled moisture, blocked fungi, and kept insects at bay. It also stabilized the timber, reducing swelling and shrinkage over time. This wasn't a one-off trick. It was practiced across cultures and centuries. In Japan, the Yakasugi method of charring wood never disappeared. In Europe, barns still stand with blackened beams, silent witnesses to this forgotten genius. Applying this today is simple. You just use a handheld torch, heat the surface evenly until it turns black, and then brush off the powdery soot. What you're left with is a carbon-sealed shield, ready to defend against rot for decades. It's cheap, fast, and honestly, it's insanely effective. Charring alone wasn't the finish line. Medieval builders went further saturating the wood with oils and resins to create a semi-polymer shell inside the carbon layer. Pine tar, birch tar, linseed oil, these were heated until thin, applied to the charred surface and allowed to soak deep into the grain. The carbon acted like a sponge, drawing the oils into the heart of the wood. When cooled, the wood became flexible enough to move with the elements but hard enough to repel water and bugs. 
Grain storage boxes from hundreds of years ago, coated in pine tar, are still found intact. Shipbuilders use similar compounds to waterproof hulls. Even today, a proper tar oil finish outperforms many modern sealants while remaining non-toxic. If this method worked so well, why did it disappear? Economics, not efficiency. By the 18th century, industrial sawmills demanded uniform lumber that could be cut quickly. Logs felled in winter, charred on site, and coated with tar slowed production and gummed up saw blades. Governments discouraged open flames near towns. Tar makers became regulated. The old ways, which required time, skill, and independence, simply couldn't survive the new industrial priorities. Yet, the results never failed. Structures built with these techniques still stand, quietly defying the conventional wisdom that wood is destined to rot. Here's the beauty. This isn't ancient history. This is frontline, actionable knowledge for anyone building today. Fence posts that won't decay, tool handles that resist cracking, outdoor structures that last decades longer, containers that stay dry without plastic. These are all possible with medieval methods. So, you know, it all begins with winter cut wood or dry heartwood. Then, you shape it, burn it lightly, brush it clean, and seal it up with a mix of tar and oil. Every step along the way builds on the last gradually transforming plain old timber into this composite material made of wood, carbon, and resin, a material that honestly rivals many of the engineered products we end up paying top dollar for these days. This is real preparedness, real craftsmanship, and real survival wisdom rolled into one. It's cheap, non-toxic, and honestly, insanely durable. Medieval builders were operating on a level of practical genius that's really easy to underestimate. They didn't just make wood last. They made it last through centuries, through damp climates, and even through, well, societal collapse. Their secrets are worth more than gold for anyone who values longevity, efficiency, and, you know, the raw power of skill over shortcuts. So, here's your mission. Take this knowledge, try it, and build something that lasts. And if you want more lessons from the front lines of history, real tips, forgotten techniques, and survival hacks that actually work, subscribe to Wisdom from the Front Lines. Share this with someone who builds, and help bring these lost methods back into practice. You'll never look at a piece of wood the same way again.